An intellectual carrot, the mind boggles. You see? You see? Your stupid minds. Stupid! Stupid! Earth has had Santa Claus long enough. We will bring him to Mars. I've been afraid a lot of times in my life. But I didn't know the real meaning of fear until... until I had kissed Becky. One thing will be clear. It's not for man to interfere in the ways of God. It's alive. Oh, it's alive. It's alive. It's alive. <laughs> Good evening, everybody, and welcome to Earth vs. Soup, episode 153. I'm Aaron Pollier. And I'm Darlene. Okay, so we're before we start the movie today, we're going to talk about an event that happened, at least while we're recording these. Obviously, you're hearing them far after we are, but a person that we've talked about a few times on this, po- uh, on this podcast has actually just recently died, and that's um, Bernard Cribbins. Um, younger is- listeners might know him from Doctor Who as being Donna's grandfather in the new series uh, of Doctor Who. But he's been in two movies that we've reviewed for Earth vs. Soup. Um, Dalek Invasion of Earth 2150 and uh, The Mouse on the Moon. He had uh, large parts in both of those. I've always felt that he was a good actor. I loved him as Wilf on the new series of Doctor Who. Um, he's char- He was charming. He was uh, charismatic. He will be missed, right? Yes, he will. Okay, so I just wanted to have that little um, brief aside because a lot of these actors and actresses that we do watch aren't around anymore. And it's it's a rare thing to find, you know, somebody in their late 80s, 90s, even in their hundreds still. There are there has been some that, that are still around and it's it's great to know that they've done a lot in their acting career or directing or writing career. And Bernard Cribbins was one of those people that worked almost up until the day he died and good for him. Mostly in com- com- comedy roles. Yeah, he was in mostly in comedy roles. Uh, not really a lot of serious roles, though he wa- he did do serious roles. It's just that he's most well known for... Let- I mean, Wilf isn't a comedy role from the new Doctor Who episodes. It's not a comedy role. Even though you can laugh along with him because he thinks a lot of the stuff is ridiculous, it is a very serious role that he's playing. So... Uh, Let's move on to our piece of crap movie that we watched today because that you chose. I chose this one. I'll admit, I'll, I'll fess up. To and it. it is the thir- third se- uh, installment in a trilogy. Uh, the first one trilogy? is trilogy. Trilogy. Sorry. Okay. The Aztec Mummy, The Curse of the Aztec Mummy, and this one is The, the robot. robot versus the Aztec Mummy. Okay. And. We've got the the fourth one, which is really isn't part of this, but is. And I want to watch it because the because women, of this movie. The women. Yeah, what is it? You wrestlers never read that. versus the Aztec. Well, oh, it's mummy. Luchadore. Luchadore versus the Aztec mummy. And you see, okay. <laughs> full full disclosure: here, I know that Robot versus Aztec Mummy was an MST3K episode in its first season. I know it. I've seen it. Here's the thing. It, the first season of MST3K is not one that I often watch. I don't remember a thing from this movie and that or the MST3K version of it. So I kind of came into this blank. I, I honestly don't remember a thing even after watching this, connecting it back to the MST3K. Now, again, full disclosure, even though this is the third movie in a trilogy. You don't have to buy the other two. You don't need to see the other two. And, and, I kept going with it because I was like, darling, fine. We can record some of these reviews out of order. We can go back and rewatch the first two, but any movie in a series should be able to stand alone. First off, I, I fully believe supposed that. to, but they don't supposed to, but they, they often don't. They should stand alone on, you know, you should be able to come into it completely blank and go, okay, I understand what's going on. It should be a good movie in its own regard. So that would be a test for this movie. I knew it would be bad, but here's the thing. It passed that test. Well, that's because 43 minutes and fi- uh, 43 and 15 minutes. 50, 43 minutes, minutes, minutes and 15, 15 seconds, seconds, Darlene, out of an hour and four minute long movie is a recap, recap. of the previous movie. Almost 
more than 70%, almost 75% of this movie is them going over what's already happened. In the last two movies. I was shocked. Like, I, I actually, I had to pause the movie when, when we found out, oh my God, they're actually moving into real stuff. Because I didn't know how short the movie was. I thought it was like maybe an actual like long movie. And okay, 45 minutes of going over what's really happened in the past one is excessive. But if it was like a two hour or two hour and a half movie, like a, a, like a long telenovela or something like that. Okay, fine. That's weird, but understandable with an asterisk. But here it's over 70% of the movie is retelling what people coming into this movie seeing the other two would have already seen this isn't a movie what that that basically makes this not a movie this is a tv episode even less than that it's less than a half hour of tel- of a it's television 20 episode. minutes worth of uh, yeah it's t- 20 minutes worth of a television episode that you could just not d- okay hold all, on all hold three on, of them on. could be in one movie hold on <clears throat> Do you even have to know what happened in the previous movies? I think it helps, but I don't think you need to. That's the thing. Like, all we know is that there's, well, we'll go over it in the plot, but before we go over the plot, give me your honest opinion. Do you need that 45 minutes of recap? I think all of them could have been one movie. Yes, they could have, but that doesn't answer my question. You, uh, did we need it? You probably did to make it a movie. You otherwise, needed it. Otherwise, there wasn't nothing there. There wasn't anything there. There was not. Yeah, there was. Uh, I don't know. See, I don't think you need to have the recap. I think it helps. Don't get me wrong. I think it helps. I just don't think you needed it. And, that, and this movie could have been, instead of 20 minutes of actual new movie, you could have made it an hour long. You could have. Okay. But. With that thought is if they could have made it an hour long. No, you didn't need it. You didn't. You, there is enough stuff in that 20 minutes of new material that you're like, holy crap. Mm-hmm. They're just telling us stuff. They're they're narrating things to us in that 20 minutes that could have been whole scenes that actually could have actually made this movie. And I'll, I'll get into it, but. Should we even talk about the recap? Yes. Okay, okay. So let's let's start. This is, it starts with a narration over credits, but in the style of Ed Wood, just not as good. And when I say that is, Ed Wood tends to do a narration that is overly flowery, that has absolutely no bearing at all on what is happening. And well, that's what this narration is. Yes, and it's without a charismatic person as um, Criswell Cros- Criswell so that's the only thing that makes the difference between what was taking place here besides oh, that you've got a no uh, <clears throat> again uh, there are many differences between Edward okay. and, and this movie okay can I finish yeah, keep, 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 just yes please you're in a setting uh, uh, instead of being just a person in in a chair doing the narration mm-hmm you have a person that is speaking to people that already know what happened. That well, it was one of those things. I was like, this is the choir, the, the preacher talking to the choir here. Okay. The, let's get to that scene. So I actually have this quote down that the guy is narrating. He goes, how far can the human mind penetrate the mysteries of the great beyond? Who knows? This movie is based on actual data mixed with fiction like f you 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 ask a question and then answer it with a eh, who knows here's the movie like and then it goes into a a sitting room yes it does see i don't even know how to talk about this movie it's so weird with and and okay i'm gonna even spoil my <sighs> opinion on this movie I'm going to recommend this movie. I'm going to recommend this movie because out of many of the movies that we've watched, watched, I was 
shocked and taken aback by how and why this movie was made. Why was this movie made? Because there's nothing here. You you have either th- these you producers did ask me this, and I said these producers scammed the studio for a a budget of a movie, or maybe they didn't. Maybe they convinced the studio, hey, just give us I a five hundred dollars, and we'll just reuse footage from the other I movie. I could not find what the budget on this one was. Many pesos. Oh, it's Me- it's a Mexican. It's Mexican film, film yeah, yeah, yeah. too, and. What I want to say about one of the things that I noticed okay, is I think they were all shot together because oh, um, the, okay. the villain is in the same clothes. You think this. Okay. Okay. Hold and on. And some of the suits look the same thing. Okay. I Keep think going. it was done either that or they put the stuff. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm looking. Yeah, I think it, it was done all at one, you know, one behind the other, and just released in different years. Darlene, it is possible. It is actually possible that you are correct in this, um, because they were all released. Like, okay, the original Aztec Mummy was released in 1957. Curse of the Aztec Mummy is also in 1957. Robot vet versus Aztec mummy is 1958. Okay. 57, but in, uh, two fifty sevens. Yeah. Two 1957s in 1958. No, this one has 1957 in Mexico. Fine. But it's possible they were all filmed together, but that makes it even more baffling. Why wasn't the end of this movie just put into the second movie then? Like, why are you just padding this out? You've, you've filmed all of this stuff together. You probably could have filmed. This could have been just two movies then. Most likely. I now I have, we haven't watched Aztec mummy. Uh, I plan on doing it. I ordered the Blu-rays for this because yes, I that need to understand have the first one in it because yes. they're all that very one short. I can only get in Spanish. That's fine. I'll watch it in Spanish and subtitle. <clears throat> I don't care. See, I have to understand why this was made. Now, I did look and I think that we released it again in 63, the first one. Okay. Uh, the Aztec Mummy. Yeah. Redone it in the U.S. Okay. <clears throat> it's possible. It's, it's possible, but Darlene... If they did film this all together as three separate movies, that's even more confusing why this third movie was released as 20 as a, minutes worth of plot and a 45 minute recap. I do 43. Not, I do not understand it. Okay, so we, we go, had to stop it because I made him stop it, the, the film at that time to look at the number. We go to a big city and there's a taxi cab. And I guarantee you they filmed this outside of the studio where they were filming the interior scenes. This looks like a loading dock or a security wall for a movie studio. Uh, Two doctors show up to a mansion to speak with a rich guy. Okay. And I didn't catch his name for the longest time, but it turns out his name is Dr. Eduardo Almada. Correct. Almada. Almada. Now, and there's Flora. Almada. Yeah, but Flora, F- Flor, is she the daughter of Doctor? She's the wife. She does not have the same last name. I mean, that's not necessarily a, 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 something that always happens when you get married. But the point is, I wrote down that she was the no, wife no, no, too no, no, all no. the way through this. That's her maiden name and that is that her gotcha. made her did she just always go by her maiden name no she went always by flora 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 it sounds like flora on the on the okay anyway i wrote down that it she was the wife so rich guy dr almada is talking about aztec artifacts and he talks about how uh well he, he goes to these two doctors and i don't even think it really matters who these two doctors are i think they're dr seplo vita and dr krupp no dr no, 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 krupp no, no. is the, the dr villain. krupp's the bad guy dr krupp's the bad guy dr krupp is the, the guy bat. with the cape 
Yes. He's not the bat. The bat's the guy with the scar. Oh. Okay, I got that one wrong. Maybe, maybe you're right. I don't. I don't. I don't freaking know. Okay, so there's these two doctors. They come to talk to Doctor Almada, and he goes, "You are both aware of the events that have been rec- uh, occurring recently with me and 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 my wife." But you don't know the whole story. And they're like, okay, fine. You, you can tell us. And this begins the 45-minute recap. So he starts talking about how he... this All this started with him perfecting hypnosis. He's like at a psychiatry convention or a psychology convention. And he perfected hip, a hypnotic technique for past life regression. And I was already like... Witch doctory. <laughs> we were already at witch doctory. And Dr. Krupp is the one that get, naysays him and gets him well, kicked out. Sure. As well he should, because this is a medical convention and this guy's up there talking about past life regression. Yes, but Dr. Krupp uses it. Sure. But Dr. Almada has no reason at all to be talking about past life regressions at a medical conference for like mental health. Like if you wanted to, if you wanted to talk about like, okay, people have beliefs and past life. Okay. That, that, that's acceptable. But the fact is, is that he's like, I've perfected a way to regress people in past life. And he's uh, done it to his wife and he's done it to his wife. And it turns out that his wife floor hundreds of years ago used to be an Aztec princess, because remember everyone that gets past life hypnosis always remembers themselves as somebody important because we're always the heroes of our Ex- own story. Chiliot? I don't know what her name is. Does it matter? I don't even know how to pronounce it. I have it. Cotical or something like that. I don't know. <clears throat> um, he hypnotized his wife and she said she used to be an Aztec princess who was to be sacrificed. And it turns out that a priest, no, a warrior that she fell in love with at the time was buried alive with a curse placed upon him to Papaco. live. Yeah, Papako or something like that. Uh, he was buried alive with this curse to live forever because he dared um, beg for her life, tried to stop her being sacrificed to the, the gods. Um, and, He destroyed her virginity is what I understood. Whoa, okay, I didn't get that, Darlene. Because they talked about her being a vir- needing to be a virgin to be- make the sacrifice. Okay, well, I didn't get that. I, I apologize. That would have probably made me, if I heard that, I would have obviously written that down because that's, they're going It was there. implied, but not. Okay, okay, all right. So uh, she's then sacrificed because he's a doofus and doesn't actually do anything. He just kind of takes what the priests are giving out to him. Like he defied them and then just kind of meekly goes into his crypt. Right. He just sits there and like drinks a potion without really caring what the hell's going on. And then just kind of walks away to go be buried alive. I didn't understand what was going on in that back. Now, but what I did understand. A defense, a defense of the scene. Oh, it's a beautiful scene. It's a beautiful scene. The costuming, the makeup. Fantastic. Uh, and and that's part of why I'm going to recommend this this movie is that the recaps of the previous stuff was really cool, and that's why I also want to watch those original movies because and, I really want to understand what the hell's and going what on. What was the Aztec god that they were? I don't know, and I'm not I'm not going to be like uh, I shouldn't just spit uh, well, something. Well, I was out. going to say that was a neat statue. That short, yes, facial. Yes, I don't know what Stone Aztec God. God that was. I don't know if it was. I am not culturally aware enough of Aztec gods to want to just spit a name out and be completely wrong and disrespectful. I just thought I'd say that I really liked yes. that statue. Yeah. Their costumes yes. there. Even though it was in black and white, you could still see that it was probably very colorful. I guarantee you they're not accurate. They're not realistic. They're not like actual historical like recreations i guarantee you they're not but they look good they looked good that's what i was trying to convey yeah don't think that we think it's actually an accurate like ceremony or anything like that um so let's see here she ends up well she's sacrificed in her memory and she almost dies from the memory of it because they pull out her heart they pull out her heart she goes into a coma 
for like a day and then comes out and says, I know where all this Aztec treasure is. Let's go get it. Oh, okay. I, I, fine. I, I, I don't know what to say to that. Like, why would she just like start spitting out that she knows where like culturally important artifacts? Are? I mean, it's not like they're archaeologists, right? Her husband's a psychologist or. I don't know. Why didn't they get a. Why didn't they get uh, an, uh, Maybe they did. Maybe one of these random characters over on the side are, and I just missed it because they're just trying to bleed over a whole hour and 20 minute movie into like a 20 minute recap. Oh, two movies. Yeah. I'm saying I'm giving like half this recap time to this first movie. Okay. So they end up finding a hidden room in this old Aztec pyramid and they end up finding a breastplate and a bracelet. That's on a skeleton that isn't just bones it's still sitting on a chair yes that she was supposed to be sitting on they don't so i'm um, going wow they don't immediately find a bracelet but she says there was a bracelet and a guy goes back to get it and that's where uh, the mummy walks out to re- get a hold of the artifacts and that's that warrior that was cursed to eternal life and he kills the guy that goes back fine whatever um he ends up catching uh floor the wife and is going to sacrifice her in some sort of recreation of the original sacrifice that happens. But here again is where the movie gets a little weird. The mummy is somehow repulsed by a crucifix. I don't know why an Aztec warrior that is clearly from before the, the conquistadors came. I would run from the doggone conquistadors too. He came from a period of time from before the conquistadors. Why would he be afraid of a cross? Like, okay, if he was there when the conquistadors were were around, yeah, I understand why he might be afraid of a crucifix. It represents like genocide to him. It would represent like awfulness, right? And the plague. And and a plague. Yeah, Uh, absolutely. Like just just the end of the world. I can understand why he might be afraid of that. Now, I'm not saying that Christianity is that, but to the Aztecs that lived through the, you know, the, the conquistadors, I can see why they might be afraid of a cross. But he's not, and they don't explain it that way. It, they, they're basically implying that he's like a vampire or something, like a classic Eastern European vampire that's repulsed by crucifixes. Wow. I didn't get that, but I might've been looking about what the crap was going on. With you didn't see the guy like just going back, no nope. back with like the crucifix, just like it was a vampire, just like he was a classic universal vampire. Maybe I, did, I saw something like that, but I didn't see what was in his hands. There's a large explosion that occurs that buries the mummy underneath a whole bunch of rubble. And the professor decides to trap the mummy and leave him under tons of stone. That's the first movie. That's that's the, the telling of the, the first movie. Now, the retelling of the second movie is that the mummy digs his way out and attacks again and grabs a criminal and throws him into a pit full of rattlesnakes. Correct? Is that the bat? No. The guy with the scars? The bat, with the, the, bat <sighs> the guy with all the scars is a guy that the mummy throws into like a chemical storage shelf and he burns himself with acid. Um, which Flora's, is a bad mask now floor is controlled by the guy that is in a cape and i think that's dr krupp yes the cape guy is dr krupp now he looks like a mix between um he looks like orson wells and and man Fu, Fu Manchu. Manchu with the it's a weird beard he, that he has and it's an over the top this guy is the definition of a mustache twirling villain I mean, damn, he would be able to do good for a ma- the master. No, he would not because the master is about a little bit of subtlety and craziness and actual evil rather than. But cartoon... he has that. <laughs> no, no, Laugh. that's that's the point. That's why I think he works because he is such a cartoony villain over the top nonsense that he brings joy to this movie where there's just kind of like menace from other characters, like the, 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 the guy with the scars. Okay. Screw off. He's not really that threatening. This guy, Dr. Krupp is crazy. Yeah. He has lost his mind long ago and is just doing wacky, crazy things that are cartoon villain stuff. And it's a joy because 
everyone else takes him completely seriously. They they deadpan it. They're playing it straight. <clears throat> And he's making a joke out of the whole thing. No, I don't even know if he's making a joke out of the thing. I think he's just nuts. But everyone I'm talking is, about the actor is making a joke out of the whole. This is, he is a Batman television series villain. Yes, he is. But it's not played off as camp. He's everybody plays straight with him. Everybody plays straight with him except him. Yeah. And he's just completely nuts. Anyway, uh, Flora is controlled by Dr. Krupp, just yelling at her from outside her home. Flora, you hear me. You must walk out of your home. And like, there's no reason why he's actually being heard. He's actually inside the car with the guy with the scars. And I think he's supposed to be hypnotizing her. She's inside a house. How is she hip- being hypnotized by a guy that's like, uh, like, I don't know, many, many yards away. All right. So anyway, she ends up hypnotized, slowly getting out of bed, but still has enough sense of mind to put on a shawl because she's just in her bed clothes. And so she wanders out of the house. They end up going to a cemetery where Flora says the mummy is hiding after all of this. And they all realize that like Flora's acting strangely when they come out to get her, like the, 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 our heroes quote unquote come out to get her boy. Flora's acting really strangely. Yeah. She's in a daze, clearly hypnotized and you don't recognize that you son of, you literally are, you talking are about what the caretaker was, was saying before they hit him on the head. No, when she's just wandering around the cemetery and Oh, Flora, Flora's look, looks really off when they come out and get her, they find her. Okay, I must be jumping ahead. Uh, uh, yeah, you're thanks. jumping ahead. So they go to the cemetery and uh, they talk to a night guard and they beat up this night guard. They just beat the hell out of him in, in the cemetery. And like, the poor hat is mangled after this. This poor guard. This is this is uh, what uh, Kelso from Plan 9. This character has clearly seen too much shit over many many movies he's seen shit yeah i like he's one done <laughs> i like one scene that he's sitting there in his bent hat and Look, these guys just came out and, and he's drinking a of me. huge fifth of of tequila <laughs> I, i've had it guys like they question him and he's like he, he's totally later on like the heroes come out and question him. he's guys look these two crazy SOBs came out here and beat the hell out of me. Yeah, they were going towards that tomb there. You go get them. I'm done. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> he just kind of walks off. And in the next month movie, Darlene, the next movie, what happens? He gets... Well, no, I mean in this movie, let's say. He gets, he gets irradiated by the robot yeah. and set on fire. And the camera just lingers on him smoking and running away screaming. Oh, that that had to be a uh, ice, ice. It was dry ice. Dry I know, ice. but the point is that the 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 robot just basically kills and, him. And you know what I thought in that one? That's a good thing that he had one of those uh, those uh, Mexican uh, blankets on. Yeah, he had like a blanket over him because otherwise his skin would have just like melted straight off. Like the point is, is that he was not set on fire by like a flamethrower. You set on fire by radiation. And this is why I think it's all the same done in the same thing. Cause that guy is in the same outfits too. Yeah. And this, and the, the hat is, it gets deranged as it goes. It, it, again, it is entirely possible, but they actually filmed this on a location. It looks like, it looks like they dirtied up the cemetery a little bit, but it does yeah. look like an actual cemetery. It's a, it looks like a cemetery that they stuck uh, cro- crooked uh, crosses on like, yes. and, and cobwebs. So to end the recap portion of this movie, the Aztec mummy is in a tomb and it's guarding its stuff. So, like, you can go in and take it from him. But then he wakes up and comes after them, and that's that's how they get, like, beat up, and they have to run away from the Aztec mummy, the bad guys. So now, now is what really is happening in the movie. So the bat has supposedly disappeared over these past couple nights. But there is a... There's a machine that uses radium... They just call it a machine that uses radium that has been stolen from a hospital. 
I assume they're talking about like an X-ray machine. I, I I don't know, but there was something about lead being stolen. Yes, and they all well, no, 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 lead was not stolen. He goes, uh, Doctor Almada. He says, look, if he is if he's using something that's radioactive, he has to get a hold of something that anyone else can get a hold of that will protect him from radiation. Not thinking that a hospital would have also had radiation proof clothing stuff that you know doctors wear or nurses wear when they're doing x-rays on people you know those like aprons that they put on yep so he's like he completely ignores that but he says that means whoever stole this and i think it's the bats that stole this had to have ordered a whole bunch of lead plating oh that's right i have a note here that says jumping and to conclusion he, everything is a jump to conclusions in this and it just turns out that they're right. Like, there's no real mystery. They just, the first thing they assume is correct in all of this. So he goes, they ha he has to have just bought an incredible amount of lead shielding. Because lead is the only thing that protects against radiation. It's not. It, it's good at it. Don't get me wrong. But it's also something that he could have just gotten a hold of. Ignoring the radiation clothing, the the... the yeah, regardless that had a lot of that. he could have he could have he could have actually just had concrete as radiation shielding he could have had a dozen different things for radiation shielding they just assume it's going to be lead and the first place they go to check the first um metals dealer in the city that they're in i'm not going to say it's mexico city because i actually don't know we don't know no hey did you in the past week have somebody come in and buy a whole bunch of lead and he's like well let me look through my records oh yes so and so bought it, it, it was a stupid amount of lead lead plating four inches thick and had it delivered to this address well thank you very much sir thank you for your time and they, they walk is out that, that where they try to play off as being cops I don't even think they they mention that they don't assume. There's one place they're playing off as cop. I think that's with the the night watchman. In anyway. the yeah, anyway, it doesn't it does not matter. So it turns out well, they go to this address and it turns out that the bat is building a robot to fight the Aztec mummy so he can actually get a hold of those No, Dr. Krupp is, not the bat. The bat is working for that's Dr. Right. I'm sorry, Krupp. Dr. Krupp. He's building a robot to fight the Aztec mummy so he can get a hold of the artifacts. Now, can, can, can I speak yes. about the lab? Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. The lab, the in the big in the middle of the lab is a bread oven that is painted silver. That's an Adobe oven <laughs> with a kind of a light, weird light on. That's what it looks like. It looks like an <laughs> Adobe oven of some sort. There's even there's uh, like wood wood underneath. Out. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't understand. I don't understand anything about this movie. Okay, but Darlene, the robot, 10 out of 10. It is 10 out of 10. So horrible. It is so bad, it's good. And and, and, and it, this to me, it, it, it has gone around the clock face. Okay, this is so bad, it's brilliant. He has a floodlight in the middle of his forehead and two incandescent light bulbs see, he, as ears he did not just build a robot he built it, a frankenstein monster into a robot, a robot because there's like a murderer's body in it in it so there's this guy's head just like that's at, looking out there's, of a helmet there's a person playing the robot inside the robot yeah but, but they <laughs> and could, they don't cover it yeah they don't cover it they're just like okay big deal there's a dude inside there we just made a frankenstein monster Do i don't we? even care who that played that it does not matter <laughs> it has a goofy spring antenna on its on its head yes it, it bobs has, up and down too. it has a like tubes going into its head from its body it has the most god damn ridiculous square like a uh, multi-band radio front to him it literally With looks like a, yeah too. it looks like a 1950s multi-band radio set um it is brilliantly bad and it looks like uh um dryer hose for its its yeah. legs yeah it is and arms i have to like say that there is they the the producers of this movie when they said let's make a robot they said we don't have money we don't want to make it look good we know that this is going to look bad so don't worry about making it look good just make it look fine and, and here and they did he, like here's here's 
100 pesos. <laughs> There's 100 pesos. Make a robot with a guy inside. And it is. Does it does it look like as a janky robot? Oh, no, yes. I, no, I'm going to say no, it doesn't, because it actually all the pieces fit together. Yes, they do. The whole thing moves exactly as intended. But it's really funny when you get the robot in the Aztec mummy fighting. Oh, because they're both so slow awkward. And so And the slow. Aztec mummy just screams constantly like it's in pain. And the Aztec, well, the robot is just, it is not Robbie the robot. It is not Robbie the robot. Oh, God. No. So anyway. But where, where is it that, what is the, the thing that they give him, give a floor a, at three o'clock, she's, if they don't come back, she's supposed to call the police. Sure. Fine. When was that before no idea. this? No idea. Because I have at four, three o'clock, Flora calls the police. So uh, let's just let, okay. So there's uh, I'm going through my notes. They're in the lab. Uh, right I now. have it written down that the the robot is brilliant and goofy as f. The robot uses radium as a power source and can disintegrate anything on Earth, according to Doctor uh, Doctor Krupp. It can disintegrate anything on Earth. Does it? No. no. All right. But it does break out of chains. It does. Um, they must immediately go to the cemetery. Everyone, yes. everyone involved. The robot sets fire to the poor groundskeeper. He runs off and sets fire with radiation. The bat steals the breastplate from the mummy. And then the mummy like immediately just gets up because now it's ticked off. The robot advances and we get a slow motion fight. The, the slow motion fight scene. The mummy destroys the robot and then gets the artifacts back when Flora gives them to him and says, we, look, take these and just go back to your eternal sleep. We'll just like fill this entire thing with concrete and be done with it. And the bat and his assistant are killed by the mummy. The end. And the police come in. Yeah, but it, it, the end. Like the mummy just kind of walks off and goes and lays back down. And no one is like, holy crap, here's this undead creation that is... I thought is... he walked out. No, he's still down in the bottom. Because that's a mausoleum for... He's still there. No one decides, like, oh, well, this is a scientific curiosity. And it was just fought by a radium-powered robot that can disintegrate anything on Earth, but doesn't do it. But now its creator has now dis been destroyed as well. So now that piece of science is, is, is lost to, to, to eternity. I don't know. That's the plot. This, this movie has nearly zero in it. Yet it seemingly has a lot going on in it at all times it's just that it's all recap and i absolutely adore it because it is trash so to you this has went so far below uh, one that it's now a eight this is not the best so bad it's good movie because there's parts where i'm just like i don't care get to the movie where it's we're still under recap and you realize that it's just a waste of time and probably the producer scamming money out of the studio. Is that where I went and went and to get brownies and didn't? No, <laughs> uh, I, I, it's not the best so bad. It's good movie, but it is so bad. It's at least entertaining because you're just, I had to buy the Blu-ray set for this because I have to try to understand why, why, just why, open-ended question why why was this movie made what made this a logical extension of the plot of the first two why did everyone feel that there needed to be a fourth movie made after this with luchadore female mexican there's wrestlers. also a male one there is a mexican uh, male a mexican wrestler it's not on our our one either oh but my there's, god there's why was there a cartoon villain? Why do they think a cartoon villain was the best thing to have and not play it up for camp that everyone's completely playing this straight? Okay. Those are questions you can answer. Why? I mean, there are so many whys in this. I love this movie, but not, I don't love, love it. I love trying to understand this movie. I don't think it's a good movie. It's awful. Is awful. There is no movie here. It's 20 minutes of actual plot. And that plot is very, very vague. Um, and it like happens in a day. Yeah. I think the entire three movies take place maybe over a week. No, because he said five years ago. 
was it five years ago? Everyone looks exactly the same. Three age. years or five years. They're all wearing the same clothes. Yes, they're all wearing the same clothes. I already talked about that. <laughs> I, what works in this movie? What honestly works? I can take. I can actually name a few things that work in this movie. It is not the worst movie we have seen by far. By far, we were entertained through this movie. Sometimes I wasn't. What worked for you? I think the over the top villain worked for me. Oh yeah. Cause over- I kept on laughing at his, his pulling that beard and you could tell it was a fake beard. I loved, and, and this, this goes back to the first movie it, during the recap. I loved the costumes in the Aztec sacrifice scene. And I'm going to give the movie credit here because they actually understood how good that scene was. So why not reuse it? It still works. It still works. It's a dramatic piece. I think all of the costumes in this movie, even later on in the actual movie, the 20 minutes of the actual movie proper are still good. I think the sets, they're clearly using the same sets over and over again through these movies. Cause we see in the, in the flashbacks, these are the same sets, like the cemetery scene. Those, is the same those set. sets are good. The, the lab is something different, yes. but you have the same setting r- r- set room room for the, parlor or whatever you want to call it yes does anything else honestly work i don't think any of the acting's very good i think it's average no, i don't think it's any but i don't think it's it might bad. have been better because they're dubbed over it could have been better in the original spanish it could have it if we have. understood spanish i'm not going to ding the movie for the acting i think the acting is acceptable i just don't think it rises into the category of oh this is good it doesn't it doesn't um it doesn't fall into the bad, though. It doesn't fall into the bad. What doesn't work in this? Unless you have something else that does work. Costuming, mm-hmm. Costume and sets. Great. What doesn't work? The jarring? The, the movie itself does not work. Why make another movie when, when over 70% of your movie is a recap? The it, it, Clearly something's going on here behind the scenes. Um, the... They would, I think, on on the bat, the guy that has the scarred face, the um, mask they did on him, they would have been better off for him just keeping the the um, keeping putting, him in shadow, putting him with makeup on instead of that mask, and having him hold that. Oh yeah, just just like rouge him up or something so he looks like red and and, and, he, and a little scar a little yeah, scar. Yeah, but he kept on keeping his cape his his collar up. And just have him do that instead of showing that. Yeah. There was a one part where they really showed you the scarring and you laughed because I laughed. It, it, it looked because bad. it looked horrible. It, yeah, the makeup, the mummy costume's terrible. The mummy costume is terrible. The mummy costume is more better than that half face no. mask. That okay. That yeah. Guy's... Okay. I should have let you finish. I apologize. you you are right. The mummy costume is better than the half mask that the, the assistant had with the scarring. Absolutely. They're both bad though. They're bad. Yes. The robot costume. No, that's not bad. It's not great. It's but cheese. It is pure unadulterated cheese. And I can't say it honestly works now. But... Now we also thought the, what is that? The monkey, the ape suit with the uh, robot monster. Robot monster. Which one is better? This one. This one is better than the yeah the cheesy yes gorilla suit. Yes, because it's clearly a gorilla suit, and they just put a space helmet on him. This is this looks like a actual handmade robot costume. Like a full robot costume. This was not bought in a store wearing robot monster. The gorilla suit could have just been rented from somewhere. And they put a freaking space helmet on him. Oh, and I, I got to give them this. That helmet is a water. Um, it looks like a water jug. We don't know. It l- looks like a water jug that usually has a spigot. Yeah. The old Galveston water. Galvanized. Galvanized water spigot bucket. Sort of. It's I, look, I'm not going to give the movie points for the robot uh, for the robot, but I'm not going to ding it, ding it for because it. it is pure cheese. 
it is what it is. I, I will say this. That one is better than the uh, Creeping Terrors. Uh... Robot Monster is better than the Creeping Terrors. <laughs> it is. Uh, we got a lo- ultimate low, don't we? Yeah. Well, I mean, creeping. <laughs> see, I don't know. Creeping Terror is not. It, it's a rushed piece. I think there's probably monsters that we've seen that are that are worse, honestly. Um, that we're just baffled by. So anyway, what can we learn from this movie? Don't just make a movie and have 70% of it being a recap. That's not a movie that you've made. That's a, I don't know what the hell that is. <laughs> Thank you. you. Know, do you know what, you know, what's possible that happened? Here's another possibility rather than just a scam that there was a contract for this director, producer, whatever, to make three films with this studio. And they didn't want to work with him again, but there was still a contract. And this is the third. And this is the one, like they just said, make this and get out. That's a possibility. Again, I'm not going to say that's true. I want to understand this movie more. We are... (laughs) are baffled (laughs) we're baffled by it and it's and how it ever made money darlene did i I don't think we wasted our time watching this though like i honestly i have i don't think i have thought about a bad movie like this because it is a bad movie does that really rate it right well okay so on internet movie database it says 2.4 out of 10 no i don't think that's right what would you write it i don't think that's right um, if you're talking about the actual 20 minutes of movie, um, I would say this is likely a three out of 10, not much better than that. Um, if you are talking about this as an hour and five minute long movie, no, I can't judge it. It can't be scored because this isn't an hour and five minute long movie. This is a recap with a little bit on the end. This is more like a TV serial that I, yeah i don't know um i can't I and that's can't the reason it. why we don't do um serials serials like we love flash gordon yeah the old serials but they they don't have continuity sometimes yeah. they go back into bad continuity well, how how it works is generally you have your first episode there's a cliffhanger but the heroes always get out of it in a really dumb way because they have to assume that no one really has seen the first one so all the buildup of tension in the first episode is immediately lost by whatever dumb way they can get out of the situation they're in in episode two but they also have to give a recap for the first episode in episode two so you end up getting this really kind of bad continuity really bad continuity and there's very little else going on that's interesting yeah i love flash gordon but I also tear my hair out watching it because it's it's mind numbing. Now, when if you were like a 10 year old kid in the 1940s and you went to a movie and you saw a, a, a 10 minute Flash Gordon thing in the beginning of a movie, you know what? I'm sure that's great. I'm sure it was amazing. It obviously was. Flash Gordon's big even today. But if you're watching it like a movie with all the little serial episodes put together, it makes me want to like strangle myself because even the comic books don't don't correlate with each other yeah and I know. you know i have them yeah and it's just it's frustrating i, I got, love flash gordon though i got three volumes of it <laughs> i love it and hate it so i am recommending this film because i think it's interesting to watch and try to understand what the hell happened behind the scenes to i i will disagree i won't recommend this because you don't know understand what's okay. going on I am not recommending this film as a good film. It is not a good okay. film. It is not a good. I am recommending this as a, this will make you think about why as a filmmaker or a, like from a filmmaking or producers. It'll make you viewpoint. come up with. Well, it, it's a, it's a good thought, uh, a thought experiment. Why the hell was this movie made? I don't understand. Like, it doesn't seem like it's an incompetently directed movie. It it does not. It The actors do fine in it. It seems like the dialogue is fine. Except that it's di- dubbed. It's in... a little cheesy. 
and it's probably simplified because I was sitting there trying to follow the woman's lips and she was talking a mile a minute at one point. Well, like a lot of Spanish females do where the men talk slower. Okay. I was in Spain for well, okay, yeah, years. you should, you should, you should definitely say Spain, but these were Mexican actors and Mexican yeah. actresses, so it's a little different. It's a little different. <laughs> but that, anyway, we'll, we'll 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 leave it there. We'll leave it there. Um, please understand this movie for me. I don't know. Send if you have information on why this was made. Tell me. Please tell us. We would like to know. So I'm Aaron. I'm Darlene. Good evening. And keep watching the skies. At no point in your rambling, incoherent response, were you even close to anything that could be considered a rational thought? Thanks for listening to this episode of This Week in Geek. Hungry for more? Check out our website at thisweekingeek.net. You can subscribe to the podcast, browse our Twitter and Instagram, and leave your thoughts on today's topics. If you'd like to give us some feedback, send us an email at feedback at thisweekingeek.net. Tune in next time, and remember... And surrender your listenership. We would be honored if you would join us. Thank you for your cooperation. Good night.